Hello. Today we're going to have an honest chat about lots of things in the crafty industry. All right. I know there's a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out. You only live once, got to have it all, got to be on the latest trend or I'm irrelevant. And that is just simply not true. And we're going to talk about it today. So in the creative industry, whether you're into card making, watercoloring, whatever, gel printing, whatever you wanna do, there's always a new great thing. There's always something that comes out every month. These stamp companies do releases every month, every quarter, and that's totally normal. They need to stay relevant. That is their business. So they will constantly be retiring things or maybe things that didn't sell well, they'll retire, or maybe things that have been around for a long time, they'll retire and they'll create something new. And every month there's a new release, there's a new theme, there's a new product, or whatever. I get it. If I was a stamp company, I would do the exact same thing because that's your business. You want to cater to the masses. I am not a business. I am my own person. And for a while, I always did that. I always bought the latest releases. I signed up to every newsletter for the stores that I shop at, all the individual stamp companies I wanted to know. I always wanted to be in the know. I don't like not knowing things. I'm a very nosy person. Ask my husband. And I don't like not knowing things. So doing that, all these releases will come to the uh, my inbox. And I have to have it. I have to have it. I have to have it. And I would just buy it. There have been many, many, many times I've bought the same thing twice because I didn't even know I had it the first time. And also many, many, many things that I've bought and I never even use them. Who's with me, right? I actually did a video. I bashed my own stash. Like I bashed myself for buying some things that why, why? It's because I had the FOMO. I had the fear of missing out. I saw someone make something. Uh, I had to run out and go buy it and you know, they do a thing with it or it's just not my thing. It's not my jam. Why in the world would I go and invest hundreds of dollars in Copic alcohol markers when I don't even Copic color? All right. It's not something I enjoy. I tried it. I tried to learn it. I took classes. I didn't enjoy it while I was taking the classes. Uh, and then I had all these Copic markers that I invested so much money in. Who's with me? Time to take a sip. All right, so if you're along that same line that I'm part of, where you have this fear of missing out, like you have got to have everything and you don't want to be that person. This is for the person that doesn't want to be that person. Here's what you do. You unsubscribe from all those newsletters. You unsubscribe from the stores. You unsubscribe from the stamp companies. It is not personal. I am not unsubscribing from... ABC stamp company because I don't like you ABC stamp company. I am simply unsubscribing it because I buy on impulse. And if I see it, I'm going to buy it whether I need it or not. Right? So that's basically the main step that you have to do is just if you don't see it, you don't know it's thick. That's it. It's just very simple. You have to take that step and go and unsubscribe from the newsletter and you might feel bad or you might be like, oh gosh, then I'm going to really miss out on, you know, that, that Fox stamp that's coming out. No, you won't. If you don't know about it, you're not going to miss out on it. Um, that is the thing that I would suggest all of you do. If you are part of like me where I'm a, I'm an impulse buyer. I just am. It, I, I admit it. Hi, I'm Laurel. I, I, I impulse buy. Um, and I had to, I had to stop that, right? Like if you go through your craft room and literally touch everything in your room, touch it all, see what you have, and you create a pile of stuff that you haven't used in the last year, you are going to be like, oh my gosh, then tally up that pile. And then you're going to be like, oh my gosh. And this kind of brings up a point of, well, what do I do with those things? that I'm purging. I don't want to just throw them in the garbage. You can donate it to a school, to an old folks home. You can do a Facebook post and say, hey, any local friends, do you want this stuff? You can give it away. I don't know that if you go out and try to sell it, you're, you're not going to make your money back. I mean, you might make a little bit, but you're never going to make what, what you put in, what you spend. So I don't envy stamp companies because they have to come up with designs and they have to be new. They have to be relevant. They have to be on point. They have to be current with whatever the trends are. I could not do that. That is, ooh, I don't envy them at all. But let's talk about, you know, how many critter stamps do you need? Honestly, how many? How many um, cake stamps do you need for birthdays if you want to do cakes or presents? 
you know, you need to take a look at what you have in your stash. And, you know, there are people that do spreadsheets and all this stuff. That's not me. I am way too lazy for that. But you can simply, I flip through, I am down to one bin of stamps and it's right there. We're next to the, hold on, right there. I have one bin of stamps and dies and that's what I'm down to. And I don't miss a single thing that I got rid of. Was it hard putting it in the get rid of pile? Uh, did I want to go into the pile and maybe pull something out? Uh, did I? No. And um, I am off all those newsletters. I don't see stuff coming out. The, the, what month is this? Is this May? The only crafty thing that I have bought in May was yesterday. And it was the sticky matte grid for my Misty. The sticky thing that goes inside my Misty stamping tool. That's all I've bought. I have not felt a need or a lacking of anything. You know, I categorize my stamps, and I'll show you my, my thing in a second. I categorize my stamps by theme. Um, you know, I, I there's no hole. I don't be like, oh my gosh, I don't have a birthday, birthday sentiment. Ugh, what am I going to do? There's no hole. So if you're trying to go through your, your stash, you know, flip through it. If, there, if there's a valid hole in your collection, like I don't have enough thank you sentiments or I don't have enough whatever, that's fine. Then obviously you want to go. You want to go to the store that you like or that carries it or the stamp company that you like that stick carries it, whatever. And you want to go search thank you and find something that will fill that gap. Do you need 52 thank you sentiment stamp sets? No. This, this is something that I struggled with. I am, oh my God, it's ridiculous what an impulse buyer I am. And me and my friend Justine, we, we feed off of each other. It's, it's really funny. Um, I will never forget that she sent me like a, like a screenshot of some Instagram card that she saw. And she's like, I have to buy all the things that go with this card. All the doodads to make this card was like $150 worth of stuff. I tried to talk her out of it. She got it. I think she made the card once and then she never used all that stuff again. That goes into step number two. <laughs> Don't feed off your friends. Don't feel like, oh my God, they have it. I need to run out and get it. It's not a competition. It's really not. It's humorous for me and Justine because it's really fun. Um, like this banter we have going back and forth and it's not just with crafty stuff. It's with like gadgets and electronics and stuff. Um, but also when I say, Justine, I'm going through my craft room, get on FaceTime with me. She is my person that will say, you do not need that. I have not seen you use that in a year. Why do you have that? So you also need a friend um, that you can hang out with. She's in Germany, so we're not hanging out in person. But um, a friend that you can call and that will be honest with you and say, that is that is dumb. Get rid of it. You don't need it. And then just do it. Don't second guess it. Just put it in the pile and go. That's it. So two things. It's not a competition with your friends and what they have. Sadie agrees. That's my dog. It's not a competition. So don't think just because they have it, you need to run out and buy it. And two, make sure you have at least one person that you can, that's in your industry. You need someone that knows, you know, I'm not going to go, Christian, do you think, my husband, do you think I need this, this stamp set right here, this butterfly? He's going to be like, I don't know. So you need someone that knows what you do. That's in your, the same industry. So she, they can understand what these things are and, um, and have an honest person that will help you go through it. Another thing, I don't even know what number I'm on. Don't go into that pile that you just made with all the stuff that you had made the decision to get rid of. You can do the Marie Kondo, does this bring me joy thing. I'm not into that. I mean, many things bring me joy that I don't need. Um, but don't go into the pile and pull it back out. You put it in the pile for a reason. All right? You need to get rid of it, whether it's donating it to a school, to an old folks home, to a hospital ward, to whatever, I don't know, libraries, whatever, wherever, kids, kids groups, kids, YMCA, I don't know, or giving it to a friend, whatever. Don't go back into that pile and get it out. I used to have a bin by my desk where I have not used this in a long time. I don't want to get rid of it because I like it, but I haven't used it. So it goes in the, you need to use this bin, use it. And if you don't use it out of that bin, then you know it's time to go. So I did that and I ended up using a lot of things that I never used before and two things happened. One, I didn't even like the stuff. I got rid of it. Or two, I was like, yes, why haven't I used this? It's been so long. So then I put it back into my, into my routine. Things that I would, what are common things that you can kind of overindulge yourself with? Common things. Ink pads, hi. I know a lot of people have multiple ink pads and et cetera. Now there are different 
inks, there are pigment inks, there are dye inks, there are archival, which are permanent inks, there are distress inks. Those are like the four main ink categories I feel like we have in the industry. Um, here are the inks that I, after all the inks, and I tried them all out, all of them out. Um, here are the inks I kept. I have all my Catherine Puller inks. Do I have the full set syndrome? No, I don't think you need to have full set syndrome for your ink pads. Now, sometimes if you buy them in a bundle, it might be cheaper, but you're also, you want colors that you're gonna use. So there are some colors of the Catherine Puller inks that I don't have because they're just not my, in my color palette. They're not in the wheelhouse of colors. I'm like choking myself with my hoodie. Um, so I don't believe in full set syndrome. I believe you get the colors that you like because those are the colors that you're gonna use. It's like your closet. I don't wear yellow, it doesn't look good against my skin, so I'm not gonna go buy a bunch of yellow shirts. And the other ink line that has made it in my stash are the Distress Oxide inks. That's it. I have Catherine Puller inks, I have Distress Oxide inks. That's it, I don't need to go and get inks from all these different companies because I like what I like. And just because Joe Blow is using ABC ink doesn't mean you need to run out and go buy ABC ink to see why Joe Blow is using it. You like your inks, those are your inks. You like your embossing powders, those are your embossing powders, right? There are a bunch of companies come out with different lines of embossing powders. I have always loved WOW embossing powders. They're very inexpensive. So those are the embossing powders that I use. I don't go out and buy all the different lines, not because they're bad, just because I like what I like and I already have the colors that I use and that's it, all right? So there are lots of things in this industry where companies make different variations of it in their own palette, in their own label, what their own formulation, I don't know. I don't get into all that. But if you have it and you like it, then that's then you don't need to go shopping for other things. If, and the final thing I have to say is, if you can't bring it upon yourself to remove yourself from newsletters or whatever, and you still want to be in the know and you can refrain from buying, you don't have my impulse condition, that's fine. Totally fine, there's two options you can do. You can see the thing you like, you can put it in your cart, you can wait a day, and if you're still thinking about it, go back and get it. That means that you're, it's in your mind, you want it, go get it. But before you go buy it, just check and make sure you don't have something similar in your stash. Now, Ardith, she's got a video. We're kind of working together. Hers is different. I'm just sitting here chit-chatting with you. She's actually going to show you a couple of things like, hey, I could go buy this stamp set, but let me go check my stash. Oh, look, I have this. This will work for that, so I don't need to go buy it. Just because a stamp set or die set or whatever is retired doesn't mean you can't use it anymore. Now, I know there's a lot of people that do affiliate programs in this industry where they make a small percentage of an item that you buy if you click their link. It's not; a, it's no cost to you. Um, and I understand that it's you're not gonna make any, how do I say this? I'm just gonna be blunt. You're not gonna make any money on affiliate sales by using retired items that are no longer available. That's obvious. However, 50% of the stamps in my collection are no longer available, but I, I like them. So I don't need to go out and buy new ones uh, to replace the old ones if I like what I like. And that's just that's just how I feel. Uh, the affiliate percentage that you, in case you just wanna know, I'll just lay it all out there, um, is anywhere from like seven to 10%. So if I was to link a $6 ink pad and you use my link, it's a free for you to click my link, I would make 10% or six or whatever the percentage is uh, of that sale. I'm not in it for the money. I, I mean, yeah, it's great if I have, if the product is still available, I will link to the affiliate link in the supply list. I a billion percent will. But if it's not available, I'm not gonna not use it because I kept it for a reason. To recap, don't buy something just because someone else has it. You need to buy it because you honestly want it, you'll use it, and you don't already have something similar. Don't believe in full set syndrome. You don't have to get the full set of inks and the full color range and all that stuff. Just get what you like. And if you haven't touched it, if it's something that you just haven't used in the last year, then you really ought to consider getting rid of it, donating it, doing whatever you wanna do with it. There's no point in keeping something if you're not gonna use it. And I promise you, if you go through the exercise of actually going through your collections and actually pulling, pulling out to the side what you haven't used, and then you start tallying up how much all that cost in that pile, you will be overwhelmed with the amount of money you have spent on stuff that you never ever used or you only used once. So if I'm only gonna get this stamp set that I just had to have and I only use it once, was it really worth $15 to make one project with it and never again? 
So these are all things that, that I have had to teach myself, some kind of impulse control. But the best thing I ever did was unsubscribing from all those things. If I, I'm still on Instagram, so I'll still see people post things. And if something, if I'm like, oh my gosh, I have, what is this? Then I can go click on it and do my own research. But I don't need things falling into my lap, all right? Because I don't have the control to not buy it. That's the God's honest truth. All right, here are the inks that made the cut. So I've got Catherine Pooler inks. These are my party colors. And over here are my spa colors. Sorry. And then I have Distress Oxides that I keep in a basket in one of the drawers down here. And that's it for my inks. Here are the stamps. And so these I still need to file away, but I have them separated by backgrounds. And they're not separated by company. They're they're separated by category. I have backgrounds, I have florals. I have a lot of florals. I have miscellaneous themed. Look, I got still got my Harry Potter stamps. These are from like 15 years ago. And I have sentiments. Okay, so here's all my sentiment stamps. And then I have holidays. And then towards the back are all my die cuts separated by almost words, backgrounds, and miscellaneous. So everything is in this one fridge bins. So this was a different kind of video for me, but I sure hope you found it helpful.